What's up everyone? Welcome back to We Know The Review. And this time we're taking a look at Finding Nemo. Okay, Finding Nemo tells the story of uh, Marlin, who is a clownfish, whose son Nemo is pretty much captured by a scuba diver. And now Marlin has to travel the depths of the Great Barrier Reef of Australia in order to find his son. <clears throat> okay, well, that's the overall basic premise of Finding Nemo. Let's try and make this review as short and sweet as possible. It is really hard to believe that Finding Nemo is going to be 20 years old. Uh, I remember watching this movie in 2003 when it first came out. I liked it then, and watching it again now, I still enjoy Finding Nemo. This is a really good animated, computer animated Disney movie in the same vein as a Toy Story in terms of, in terms of, its, in terms of its quality. Finding Nemo has got such a simple yet very emotional story. It's backed by an outstandingly talented voice cast. And I just don't have a whole lot of negative to say about this movie. Like I really liked Finding Nemo. If I have any negatives, they're very minor at best. That could have easily been fixed, but that's pretty much it. They don't affect the overall story. It just affects, it. it, it the minor criticisms will just affect what I would have done a little bit differently with certain characters. And I'll, I'll touch on those momentarily. But like I but as an overall package, Finding Nemo, this is one of the good ones. <clears throat> so, but let's talk about the cast. The cast, the voice acting in this movie is spent is spectacular. Albert Brooks as Marlon, Nemo's father. I like Albert Brooks. I liked him since his, since his voice work in The Simpsons. I liked him in some of his other uh, live action, in the, some other of the live action movies that he's done. And in Finding Nemo, I enjoyed him in this movie. I like him as the character of Marlon. He has that right balance of uh, comedic timing and emotional depth and emotional dread. And he encapsulates it very, very well. Especially in the prologue when he's with his wife, when they get attacked by a barracuda, and when and when ne and out of all the eggs that, that Marlon and his wife had, the only one to survive was Nemo. And he, you no, know, he does a really, he, he does a very, very good job at acting like this overprotective father who does not want no harm to come to his only child, who just happened to just survive a horrific, who survived a horrific attack. You know, I liked it. You know, you can relate to a character like Marlon, this overprotective parent who will stop at nothing to protect their only child from facing danger that they barely escaped from to begin with. <clears throat> I like all of that. And then you got Nemo, who was like this innocent kid who, you know, he loves his father, has a good relationship with his father, but he, but he hates being overprotected by his father. He hates that he has that he has limit that, that he has to be limited to do certain things. And that all has to do with the you know, with, his, with his lucky fin, which, which is smaller than his regular fin. You know, the fact that he the fact that he was the survivor of a massacre. But Nemo, you know, he Nemo feels that he can do what the other fish can do. But he's just being, but he just has this barrier of his father that just prevents him. I like it. Like Nemo and Marlon, they have a very loving relationship, but it can be very hostile from, ne from Nemo's point of view in a lot of ways since, he's, since his father limits him from doing certain things. I like all that stuff. I think Nemo did a really good job at encapsulating everything about the Nemo and Marlon relationship. It's a loving relationship first, but there is some hostility there. So yeah. And again, you have to like the characters of Marlon and Nemo even to just to just accept that. And you accept those two characters in absolute spades. <clears throat> now, in terms of the other characters in this movie, there's a slew of memorable characters in this movie. You have Dory, played by Ellen DeGeneres, who is this blue fish that goes in and out of, uh, has that suffers from memory loss. Um, I like the character of Dory. I think she can come across as a little bit too annoying in a lot of scenes. But overall, DeGeneres played her in a very innocent way. And I actually do like the, uh, the relationship that forms between Marlon and Dory. It's, it's, it's a good friendship and companionship that forms between the two since, since Dory is the only one that can read human handwriting and was the one that saw the boat that Nima got captured on. She just so happened to suffer from memory loss, which does lead to some good comedic moments here and there throughout the film. So, and to the movie's credit, they don't overdo it which I can appreciate because 
You could have took that gag of her suffering from memory loss and run it into the ground to the point where it just stops being funny. But Dory will also have moments where she would remember things and does remember things. So they play with it a little bit, which I do enjoy. And she does have, and, oh, and but overall, Dory has a very likable and optimistic attitude that is opposite of Marlon's, you know, pessimistic, race against time attitude. It works. It surprisingly works. And I like it a lot. Um, other characters in this movie are the three sharks, Brucey, voiced by uh, 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 Bruce, the Hem Brucey, the great white shark, uh, Anchor, and Chum. This is one of my crepes. I love these three sharks. I think these three sharks, I think the scene of the three sharks being these who come across as man eaters, but they really go to shark synonymous <laughs> because they don't want to eat no fish. I think that whole segment of the movie is absolutely hilarious, and I think this movie did not even get enough mileage out of the three sharks, because I thought they were funny as shit. Especially since two out of the three are voiced by Bruce Spence and Eric Bana, who I thought were absolutely hilarious, and they and the three, and the, and the chemistry between the three sharks are I thought were just hysterical. Like, I would have loved to have more scenes, and the and the fact that Dory kind of becomes a friend to them. You could have gotten so much more mileage out of it. But what we did get, I enjoyed it a lot. I love the three sharks. Um, when Nemo gets captured by the diver, he gets put into this fish tank. And he meets these characters of Gil. You know, he meets a starfish. And uh, and a bunch of and a pufferfish and a bunch of other fishes. These become his uh, new friends. And I like it. I like Nemo's relationship with everyone in the, uh, in the tank. In the uh, fish tank at the dentist's office. Especially that of Gil, who is voiced by Willem Dafoe, who is the hardened leader, and like Nemo, is from the ocean himself. And they have this whole plan to escape by put by draining out, by trying to get the fish tank to be all dirty and stuff like that. Like, you know, at first Nemo can't do it, but then he gets the motivation and does do it, and that's where he and that's where Nemo earns the respect of everyone in the fish tank. <clears throat> and I enjoy that. And I like the relationship that he does. And I, and, I, and I do like the relationship that Nemo and Gil have. It's kind of like a mentor-student type of relationship. Like, Gil teaches Nemo to toughen up in a bit. But in Gil's own way, he does have a soft spot for Nemo. Because he realizes that Nemo, he's just a kid. And he does have his physical limitations. And, you know, you can tell that Gil cares about Nemo, too. I like it. I really like it a lot. And you have... Uh, uh, Jeffrey Rush, who voices Nigel, who is a seagull, he has some funny bits here and there, which I did enjoy. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, like the overall casting in this movie is fantastic. The animation, the computer-generated animation, twenty years later, still holds up. I love the look of the Berry Reef of Australia. The underwater sequences in this movie look fantastic. It is so colorful, so otherworldly. You don't feel like you're watching fish talking. You feel like you're watching watching people that have been through experiences because they played so realistically and i can't praise this movie enough <clears throat> i love it a lot I, I love the underwater sea i love the entire the overall look of the great barrier reef it looks so colorful so vibrant um i love other as i love i love how when you go deeper into the ocean it, it can be dark and brooding and mysterious and dangerous and they do a good job at creating that atmosphere but but still having that comedic edge to it in a lot of ways uh I love other characters in this movie that make appearances like Crush the Surfer Dude Turtle Lock. Dude, bro. Like, I would have liked to see more Crush the Turtle in this movie because I thought he was cool. Very laid back. Like, 150, dude. It was like, what's like, um, like, Crush is so inspired by the Ninja Turtles. It is so hard not to, like, say, oh, no, that's not Crush. That's Michelangelo. You know, it's, it's cool. I like, I like Finding Nemo. It is such a good animated movie it's very wholesome it's got a good story it's got good animation it has a very thrilling third act that is edge of your seat and it's so heartwarming when marlon and Nemo are finally reunited together especially when you have dory added to the mix they become their own sur surrogate family in a way i enjoyed this movie it's so heartwarming it has a good story to it it knows how to mix the light moments with the with the uh, little bit of somber moments that it does have but it never loses its tone it always stays consistent, and that's why I give Finding Nemo a solid 9 out of 10. Despite two minor criticisms, this really is a near-perfect movie. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Finding Nemo. Let me know yours in the comments sections down below. Like the video and subscribe, and I will check you back next time for more.